a lot of you will be aware with this, but I'm going to first talk about primary, secondary, and tertiary colors, uh, complementary colors, tints and shades, and all the like theoretical parts about colors. So firstly, I'll start with the primary colors. Primary colors are the ones which you cannot make by mixing other colors. These are the colors in their purest forms. There, you cannot mix any two colors to get these primary colors. There are three primary colors. So firstly, starting with yellow. So it should be a neutral yellow, which means it should not be like a bit of a green or kind of orange. It should be somewhere in the middle. So this is primary yellow. Then other second primary color is red. So you can put red here. And the third sorry primary to, color. Uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, yeah. Uh, see, none of the brands sell it as primary and all or neutral. They have their own unique names. So yeah. as a beginner, I don't know which, which name of yellow is actually a neutral or it's a cold or a hot. How see, to... Most, most common name you will get is lemon yellow for the yellow so that should be the neutral one lemon yellow Got it. then for crimson uh, for the red crimson is slightly tinted towards the pinker side like the blue side so if you mix crimson with a little bit of orange or yellow you will get pure red so like Brent sell it as uh, permanent red primary red so I have this from Daniel Smith. This is the permanent red, they say. So this is like a neutral red. Or you can uh, mix the neutral red by crimson and uh, mixing a bit of orange. It won't give you like as bright as a result of like the primary red itself, but it will get you somewhere near. So lemon yellow, permanent red, primary red, or crimson will work too. And for the blue, we have serenine blue. So serenine blue is very common one. You will get this almost in all brands. So this is serenine blue. So these three colors are primary colors. Now all the other colors you can see can be make, uh, made by mixing these three colors. So if we mix uh, yellow and red, we will get orange. So orange is a secondary color. Maybe I can mix it right here. So first we got some yellow and I'll mix some red to it. So mixing these two colors kind of got us orange. It's kind of more red right now. I'll add some yellow to it. So mixing yellow and red, we got orange. Now mixing on this side, mixing blue and yellow should give us a green. So when we mix these two, we get green. And for the third color, mixing blue and red, we will get purple or violet. So basic confusion between violet and purple is purple is said to be a bit more towards red and violet is more towards blue. So when you mix both of these in like a one is to one ratio, you get a color in center and violet will be somewhere more blue and purple will be somewhat more red. So these three colors we got are called secondary colors. We got the secondary colors mixing the primary ones. So you can see we mix yellow and blue, we got green. Mixing blue and red, we got purple or violet. Mixing red and yellow, we got orange. Now for the tertiary colors, what I've noticed over the years is they like distribute tertiary colors in two ways. So one of the ways is like uh, mixing yellow, like on the color wheel side, mixing yellow with some green to get like a green yellow kind of a color. So that's one. Now we will like mix all of these. So we will get like a green blue kind of a color here, which is green slightly tinted towards blue. Then here we will mix blue and purple. So we should get like a 
violet kind of a color more towards blue and on this side we will mix purple with red so we'll get like a cooler uh sorry a warmer purple so that's purple mixed with a little more red then we will get an orange red when we mix orange and red this side so that's kind of a deeper orange here and then we will get a yellow and orange mix this side yeah so these 1 2 3 4 5 and 6 these six colors are uh, said to be tarshri colors according to the color wheel and now we have the second way of making the tarshri colors which is by mixing the secondary colors like we did for the primary ones so uh, we get sap green when we mix green and orange i will do it right here so i first have got some orange here and some green so when you mix these two you will get like kind of a muddy green so this is sap green or olive green then when we mix green and purple we should get like a white uh, gray kind of a color so i have some green here and i mix some purple now this won't be an exact gray but it should be somewhat gray color you can see so that's what we get when we mix green and purple now mixing purple and orange should give us a brown kind of a color so we have purple here and some orange that's kind of a reddish brown only orange uh, adding a bit more orange will get us a good brown so tarshri colors there's a bit of confusion there there is a, there is a, there are two ways of making them so one of them was according to the color wheel which we got so we made like a yellow green a blue green then we have a purple blue like one which are mixed by mixing primary and secondary colors so this is by the color wheel we got six tarshri colors and by mixing the secondary colors which are green orange and purple we get sap green gray and brown so that was for the color wheel now this is more of a theory thing when you get like green from the tube it would be much more brighter than what you will get by mixing lemon yellow and blue so if you are very like restrained on the palette you only have three colors then you can get these three otherwise there's not much of a point in making every color by mixing them when you have it in your palette or you can get it as a tube and the results will be quite different so if we like take the pure green from the palette it will be much more vibrant and much more saturated than what we will get by mixing these two so that goes for all the colors here so getting like the pure pigment from the tubes or the cakes will be much more vibrant than mixing those and then theoretically uh, theoretically if we mix all these colors in paint we should get black but it will not be like a uh, deep black it will be more like a gray tone only gray a muddy gray kind of a color it won't be like black which you get from the tubes or from the pens so that's like the theoretical part about primary secondary secondary and tertiary colors now let's talk complementary colors so basically what complementary colors means is the colors opposite to one another on the color wheel so we have like the famous like tertiary uh complementary colors are it be made like an opposite line like a differentiating complementary line so blue the complementary color to blue is orange so these two colors are entirely separated on the color wheel so these two are uh, complementary colors then we have yellow and purple which is another set of complementary colors and then we have green and red which is yet another set of complementary colors so these like three set of colors are set complementary now you can pick up any color on the color wheel like if we get this one so it's uh, yellow and orange so the complementary to this 
will be a mix of blue and purple so just the color which is opposite to like the colors which are opposite to one another one another on the color wheel are said to be complementary colors now the thing about complementary colors is when you mix those two you should get a gray so let's try mixing for example let's try mixing orange and blue so firstly i have just got some orange here now if i mix some blue to it we should get like a gray color some more blue i am adding so we've got like a warmer kind of a gray here now let's try mixing another set let's try mixing yellow and purple so i've got yellow here and now let me get some purple mix these two together and that's more like of a more like a brown color but theoretically this should be a gray too and then let's try mixing the third set the green and the red one so i've got some green here and let me try adding red to it so that's yet another gray it's mixing complementary colors on the color wheel like the colors which are opposite to one another should get a somewhat gray colors so these will be different according to the temperature if you take like one of the warmer colors you will get a warmer kind of a gray and if you get uh, like cooler colors you will get cooler kind of a gray now many of you might not know what warm and cool colors are so if we like put a line here so all the colors which like you can visually say are warm like yellows orange red these are the warm colors and then we have the cooler ones like blue green and purple these are the cooler colors now purple kind of can be said to be a warmer or a cooler color depending on its particular shade if it like bends more towards the redder side or more towards the blue side so it can be a cooler if it's more blue and it can be warmer if it's more towards the red side same goes for the green like this green we have can be a warm color and this green we have is a cool color so and this is a neutral green so whenever i say a neutral green means it's green in its pure form it's neither uh, like bent towards the warmer side like this neither towards the cooler side like this this is a neutral green then we have a neutral yellow which is like neither shifted towards the greener side neither shifted towards the orange side so that's what neutral colors are so that's basically the color theory now one more aspect uh, aspect we have when it co comes to colors is tints and shades of a color so i'll get a fresh sheet basically what you get from like what you can interpret what you can like put in your paintings from all this is you can be careful that you don't get these like the opposite colors together or you'll end up with some muddy shades like this so uh, a lot of like a lot of artists struggle with the sky because you can see blue blending with orange so like i to do so whenever i try to mix like blue with orange i'll end up with gray like some sort of a gray so the sky will tend to look less vibrant and more towards the gray so you can just keep in mind that these two colors are complementary so i should not be mixing those together on my painting to avoid getting muddy colors and using complementary colors if they, you are not mixing them then they will look really good uh, against each other because they are like totally uh like separated on the spectrum they won't look any similar to each other so they will look good to each other if you are not blending them but if you blend them you will end up in muddy grays so that's what you can like put in your style so and now the last aspect we have in color theory is tints and shades so basically what a shade is when you like get a pure color let's take red for example today so this is a pure red now shade is when you add black to the color like you keep adding black to the color and you finally end up with black pure black so i've added a bit of black here then when i like keep adding more black a bit more black here see like i continue doing this until i like finally reach pure black so these are any of these color wait i'll do all the all of them 
just so I can like, tell you. So any of these color lying between pure black and pure red, any of these shades are said to be shades of red. So when you add black to a pure color, those are the shades of the color. So if I pick any of these color, you can say it's a shade of red, which basically means you have added black to red. And then we have tints. So you might have guessed tints is when you add white to a pure color and you finally reach pure white. But when you are like, we are talking about watercolors here. So you don't add pure white. You instead use water for the same purpose. So what you are allowing, uh, what you're trying to do is you're trying to add more water, dilute the paint, which will make it more thinner and the white of the paper will show through, which will make it look like a lighter color. So again, let's start with red. So I have pure red here. Now I'll add a bit what uh, like a little water to it. And I keep adding more water to it unless until I finally reach like a very light red, like pure kind of water. So I like keep diluting it. So you can like dilute it until there's a very little pigment in the shade. So I, uh, just for guessing, we have pure white here and we started with red. So any of these colors lying between pure red and pure white is uh, called tint of red. And these are shades of red. So if you pink, uh, like pick any of these colors, it, it's called a uh, tint of red and any of these colors will be called a shade of red. So in watercolor, we are mixing water, but in any other medium, you will mix white to get the tints. And here we have the primary, secondary, and complementary colors. So if you have like any doubts among these, this theory part of watercolors. You I, I might have a query. Um, how do you use this color spectrum or color wheel to plan out the washes so that the desired effect is there, but the muddiness goes away. You did mention about the sky, but yeah, in yeah. general backgrounds, how do you plan? See, you just have to keep in mind that you are not using opposite colors together. So like, if, uh, like if I were to, that's a big one. I'll just search for a small painting like this one. That's one of my recent paintings. So I have a kind of orange here and blue here but i've used very much of water here so it almost looks white in between if i had not used the water and i would have like made it pure orange to pure blue this part would have looked super muddy and kind of like that we mixed orange and blue to get this so this part would have looked like that but i had it in mind that i'm using complementary colors so i will end up with gray that's why i added more water so it doesn't look great. Instead, it looks white. So just keeping in mind that you are using complementary colors and you will end up with muddy colors. You can prevent it by probably not using that or dil diluting it until you don't see the gray or the muddiness in the colors. I have a related question. How do you decide uh, a color palette for your painting based on uh, this now? Now, what I've like learned from the masters is the 70% of your painting should be in a particular color range. So if you are following like blue colors, 70% of it should be basically blues. If you are like going for a warmer, like a look to the painting, most of like 70% of the color should be reds. I, I find it difficult to like follow that. So I first look at the reference, so what the reference has got for the colors. And if the reference has some challenging colors, like it's nature, so it has all the colors, but if the colors in the reference are kind of contrasting to each other, are opposite on the color wheel, so I'll just change them. So if I have like, this is Veridian hue or a pure green, you can say. So if I have green and red together in the reference, I might not use this green. I would instead use this green or this green. 
So this green, if I use, it, I would get a bit less muddy color. And if I use this green, I would get somewhat more of an orange kind of a color when I mix these two. So I just have that in mind that I don't get gray. Instead, I like switch the colors up so that they are not exactly complementary to each other. Okay, and uh, to uh, make sure that the painting still looks cohesive, uh, is is there is there like a formula or something, or is it just something we need to try out? I, I don't like cohesive in the way of colors. I don't focus on that. I focus on the composition when it comes to like binding the painting together. And like if you are, if you're painting a landscape it gets easy so you can just add like the first wash to the whole painting which is a common wash for the whole painting so it kind of brings the whole painting together and yeah i mainly focus on the composition when it comes to like binding it all together colors don't play a huge part in that for me okay thank you so any more questions regarding any of this color theory any colors or whatever you want to ask like Anyone has anything to ask? Shall we move ahead? All right. Yes. So like another, if you focus more on the vibrancy of colors, the other, the other things you can try to get uh, more vibrancy in your colors is using tubes instead of pens because pens are like already dried ones. So they kind of lose the vibrancy. So if you want like bright, saturated colors, then you might uh, need to pick up some tubes. The other thing you can uh, do is use clean water, like just change your water like every few minutes or like every half an hour, just so the water is clean. And using like dirty water will lead to dirty colors and muddy colors overall. Then using like in watercolors, that's not even a question of using white uh, like just for the washes. You can use white for highlights and stuff, but using white in the washes, you should just not do it in watercolors. You can do it if you want, but it's not like recommended. So uh, not using whites and not using, like not using a ton of blacks. So uh, if you are using black, then clean your brush, clean your water, because otherwise you will like end up with, like if I meant to go for red, I will instead paint like a shade of it. So that will reduce the vibrancy and then the last thing you can do to maintain the vibrancy is like if i want a bright red so instead of using a thick red at once i can what i can do is like apply a lighter red at uh, for the first layer then once this dries i will apply another layer on top and if i want it to be more saturated i will let it dry once more and i will apply another layer on top so that way you can stack different layers to get the vibrancy you desire for instead of going in going for it in the same layer so that kind of helps for the vibrancy part so any questions i can answer them or we can move towards like washes and other techniques i've got uh, Liam, just one question to what uh, you uh, mentioned in the last about stacking colors. So yeah. whether it is, uh, you know, uh, I mean, this one was more about uh, the same same color or the same shade of the color that yeah. you're applying one on top of another, right? So is, yes. there a, is there a possibility, is there a higher possibility of getting, uh, you know, um, streaks on your paper uh, when we are, uh, of course, you know, I mean, uh, the expertise or control helps, but the possibility increases of getting more streaks if we are stacking colors instead of applying it yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. in one go. Yeah, I got you. So the, it basically depends on two factors. First, the okay. most important one is the paper you are using. So if right. you're using a hot press paper, mm -hmm. uh, so it will be very smooth and it won't allow the color to seep in. So what it has basically to do is with the absorbency of the paper. So if the paper absorbs the color, then the color is kind of like permanent on the paper, which is like a characteristic of ash paper, which I use. So it directly absorbs the color. So once this color has dried, I can do anything over it and it won't come off. Uh, won't come off. Right. So, okay. and this paper I'm using, it's such a chitrapat paper. So the absorbance is not that good. 
So once it is dried and I go over it again, I might see some streaks. Mm -hmm. Another way of avoiding it is using softer brushes. Don't use synthetic brushes when you are doing that. Use softer brushes, probably mop brushes or like sable brushes, whichever you can get. So these brushes are very soft. They have very soft bristles and softer bristles will like won't like corrode the paint which is already on the paper that much so it won't come off that much and using like don't apply much of the pressure just let the uh, like the weight of the brush do its thing don't apply much uh, like a lot of pressure on so maybe we should go ahead with the washes now just give me a minute i would need to change my uh, water it has got uh, dirty and will lead to muddy colors i'll just change it and come so let's start with the washes here 